Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Whatever place it is that you have uh, tuned on to the Life uh, Signatures Radio, it's a daily show. We're talking about purpose, productivity and resilience in this show. And in between there, we also share some things, some details, uh, some, uh, what do I call it, some other topics that are not necessarily purpose, productivity and resilience, but we share some of those things in life. But they are related to those three. They are related to purpose, they are related to productivity, they are related to resilience. For example, in the series, in this season, we're talking about love. We've mentioned, um, we've said, we are talking about the challenge of genuine love. And we are looking at how we can be able to decipher if something that is claiming to be love is really genuine. And let me just do a disclaimer here. You guys, don't you ever think for a minute that I'm living what I am saying. Don't you ever think for a minute that I've arrived and I am Dr. Love. You guy, I am a serious work in progress. But that being the case doesn't stop me from talking about the authenticity. Did you know, by the way, sometimes those of us who are teachers, the more we teach, the more we become the message. The more we realize how we need to embody that particular message. From theory to practical. So don't stone me because I'm not expressing some of these things in my life. But just tag along and reflect. Let this be a mirror, a virtual incubator. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. In the episode two days ago, we talked about the idea that love is a human need, a genuine human need. It's not that there are some people who are special who need love. It's a human need as long as you are human, black, yellow, red, white, whatever the color of your skin, whatever the class or you are kissed, if there is such a thing in your vicinity or in your country. Love is a genuine need. We were all created to long for love. Actually, we are also created to offer, with the capacity to offer love. As a kid, the only thing that can make you to do the opposite is the exposure or the environment in which you grow in. Some of us who grew in environments where hugging was weird. Telling someone you love them was... Uh, what, 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 what are you talking about? I mean, it's embarrassing, right? And it stifled the way we've, we've, we've come out. I mean, the, the, the love itself. And there is no question about that, that desire, that need. So we force stone faces upon our, our faces... So that we don't see that we are enjoying the love that we are getting. Right? It's... Anyway, let me not go there. But we're talking about the challenge of genuine love. And I've been giving you some measures here and there. You can go to the previous episodes and you can just listen in. We say that the first challenge of genuine love is that it is authentic. 
It's got to be authentic. There's no pretense in there. There is no pretense in love. It's not fake. Love is not something you can say you fake it until you make it. And, and let me say this. I saw statistics of divorce in the world just this week. Did you know that in India, the divorce rate is 1%. 1%. 1%. In Portugal, it's 80. 80%. What's the difference between Portugal and India? Largely in India, marriages are arranged. These things of feeling, oh, I feel I'm dating, I'm courting. She's just like me. I want a woman like this, like this. It's like you maybe don't even have a choice. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like you don't have a choice in the kind of woman that you're going to marry. But the divorce rate is less than in the other world where there is this liberality, right? Uh, so much so that the challenge of genuine love is that it doesn't last. As in it's convenience. That's the word. It's just con- for, for the sake of convenience. Anyway, I'm doing a recap. The challenge of genuine love is that it is authentic. Number two, the challenge of genuine love is that it is passionate. Number three, the challenge of genuine love is that it is selfless. And yesterday, number four, we talked about this. We say that the challenge of genuine love is that it is progressive. It celebrates growth. Today, let us look at this. Number five, the challenge of genuine love is that, is that it is regal and resolute. I, I touched on this two days ago when I say that genuine love is going to elicit some anger in you. And I quoted the long scripture, Psalm 18, where it says that a guy was in distress and he called unto the one that he loves or the one that loves him which is God, that was David. And the Bible says that the earth shook, drama unfolded, right? Because God was angry. Why was he angry? Because the object of his love was in distress, or someone was distress, or disturbing him. That's a semblance of resoluteness. But the challenge of genuine love is that it is resolute and regal. It is not wishy-washy. It can take you out. The example of Mama Bear. They normally say, no matter what you do, whether you're innocent or you don't, you, you meant good, don't you ever come between a bear and her cubs. The challenge of genuine love will, will rise up. Don't you ever come between a mother hen and her chicks. You will suffer the consequences genuine love in leadership especially is so kingly kingly and there are different types of kings there are those kings who are servant kings they are looking out for the goodness of their kingdom and their subjects and then there are those foolish kings who are looking out for themselves those ones are not people who are in love with what they are doing but the genuine love in leadership is so kingly and it's so magnificent it talks about the resolve to move things so that others can benefit it is what caused Jesus to go to the cross in fact he told this guy called Peter, you are a devil. Get behind me, devil. Why did he say that? This is a guy who had said, you are the the Christ, the son of the living God. And Christ told him, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. It is God who has revealed that to you and you are the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Two verses down the line, you are a devil. 
devil. Get behind me, devil. Get behind me, Satan. Why? Because Peter was trying to persuade this guy. Let me call him this guy. Peter was trying to persuade Jesus not to go on the cross. And you know, those who, who believe on the cross, you know that it is at the cross that sins for the whole humanity, not for Jews, but there are two races in the Bible, Jews and Gentiles, only two. Those two races were catered for by the cross of Jesus. That on that cross, dying, and anyone who believes that he died for their sins becomes righteous. It's like they are covered. God looks at them and they see God sees Jesus. And so Peter was telling him, don't go to the cross. The challenge of genuine love is that it rose up that particular day and called this guy a name. A vile name. He called him Satan. Get me behind. Get behind me, Satan. And the the Bible says he set his face like flint toward Jerusalem where he will pay the ultimate price of his love. It is resolute. It's magnificent. And I'm going to talk about something else about that tomorrow. This resolute love, this genuine love, it is what caused Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso. Actually, he's the guy who named that country Burkina Faso, the land of an upright man. I think it, it used to be called Upper Volta or something like that. It is what caused Thomas Sankara to revolutionize Burkina Faso. You, you, you see what Thomas Sankara did? The things he was championing? It was a resolute love. The same thing with Martin Luther King Jr. When he was saying that I have a dream. It was a resolute love right there. It is this love that sees despots deposed. And people delivered. It is this genuine love. If I may say so. That saw a man in Uganda in the 80s go against a whole army with 27 guns. It is, when you mention names like Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, Ken Sarawiwa, Benedict Chiwanuka in Uganda, and Festo Chevirenge in Uganda, these men rose up to the challenge of genuine love. They showed result. They did not count their own life as anything worthwhile. Because of the genuine love that they had for the things that they loved. Or the people that they loved. When there is a resolute love. When it is there. You can be sure that you cannot be left behind. Death is the only separator. As far as resolute love genuine love is concerned because it is a rego it is resolute tomorrow we're going to look at one more in fact we've started winding up but until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.